Well, good afternoon. It's now about 2.30 on Sunday the 7th of July. Uh, this is Andy and this is my allotment. Uh, I've been on site today since about uh, 9 o'clock doing bits and pieces. I thought I'd give you a quick update on where things stand for my allotment at the moment. Start off as always with the potatoes. Now we've got flowers on at least three varieties here. Um, it's looking like these at the front are Bambino, no flowers on them yet and they are supposed to be a second early, so we should wait and see. And behind them is Casablanca, which is looking quite good with the purple flowers. And then behind them we've got some yellow flowers with uh, bright yellow centres, which I think these are actually Pentland Jolly, because uh, although I'm not certain I'm not 100% certain. After I dig down in the bottom and see if I can find uh, one of the uh, labels I put in. Because I've got these pink flowers here as well, which I've got those in the polytunnel. Now in the polytunnel I had Pentland Javelin and Casablanca. So I'm not 100% certain which variety I've got here until I start harvesting and find the labels again. Moving onwards here, we have some Anya, which is the main crop. I'm on some white flowers here, the yellow flowers. Actually, thinking about it, I think those are salad blue. Because I'm pretty certain that I put um, Mary's Piper, Anya, then salad blue, with the, which have got these uh, yellowy flowers. So I think that's what they are. They're a main crop, so they're going to be there for a while yet. Oops, I've got some Mary's Piper here, which are a second early, I believe. Onto the pots. We have got some uh, flowers on these which are the Maris Piper and the Anya look like they're falling away actually already uh, they probably need a bit of water when they're being in pots they need water rather than the ones that are in the ground lovely lovely blue flowers again which I think are the javelins and then the yellow flower over there which is the salad blue again the ones at the front here Casablanca or uh, Bambino again I can't tell what they are without digging the label out no flowers on them Right, moving on to the fruit area. Red currant bushes, nothing coming up on them this time. Looking nice and healthy though. And strawberry from the other side. Uh, raspberries. I have a raspberry. Woo! First raspberry of the year. Not quite ready yet, but looking good. Other raspberry bushes in here. Looking nice, nice uh, different colours of leaves depending on what sort of variety they are. On the far side, strawberries and some uh, marjoram, more strawberries, oregano, more strawberries, mint, sage and some more mint there uh, with strawberries at the back. Now the hanging baskets, uh, this one with tomatoes in it is looking a bit dry uh, so I'm going to have to water that one up and this one is certainly looking dry but the weather has been absolutely beautiful here today, blisteringly hot. So I'm waiting for the sun to go down a little bit and needs to go into shade so I don't scorch the leaves. Again, this one here with tomatoes in it. Looking okay, but the soil's a bit dry. And I'll whisk round and show you the strawberries on this one. Again, I think this one I haven't had enough water on them. Lots of strawberries as you can see. But the problem is they're all a bit misshapen and a bit strange. This one especially. I mean that's like, I don't know what has happened to it. I think it's because it's not had enough water. I've not been watering these as well as I ought to, to be fair. So, anyway, moving on from those. Down here, I'll get my shadow out of the way. Loads and loads of lovely strawberries. And I've got some, um, what was that one else? Chervil, which was purple when I put it in, it's now doing well. Fronds of dill, and some coriander, and more strawberries, doing fantastic. Quick look inside the polytunnel. Potatoes are starting to flop. Uh, these haven't flowered yet. I think they just need standing up and tying up a bit higher. And then at the back there we've got some lovely flowers. Um, now I've been having problems keeping things dry, uh, dry, uh, watered in here because it's been so pigging well hot. So what I've started doing is I've used the lids of propagator units to stand my um, pots in. And I'm filling them up with like an inch and a half of water at night and then leaving them 
to take the water as they want it and it's doing really well I've got loads of the new tomatoes coming perhaps a bit late but well some chilies courgettes and I've actually sown some sweet corn and some beans uh, they were putting on Thursday and I've got a bean and some peas coming up already so quite pleased with those uh, harvested some onions not a huge amount a couple of reds and half a dozen whites some fairly small one pretty big the way it goes uh, tomatoes, uh, Roma tomato down there came from a tiny tiny plant a week ago that was six inches tall and it's suddenly gone to about two foot six and chilies getting some chilies on there now uh, getting some little purple ones and some big purple ones as well so very pleased with those now give you a quick look at this side of the plot because last week this was full of grass it was absolutely heaving with knee deep grass if not more over the week it got worse so what I've done cut it all borrowed a petrol mower from uh, one of the plot holders Stuart cut all the grass and I put down the remainder of my black plastic on this at the moment the bits that are still grass I'm going to cover with cardboard for now while I get some more black plastic and the other side of the old manure pile there there's a bit more grass to go which needs to be taken off and the other side of the potatoes uh, the orchard has been cut already by somebody else but I've got bits of grass here which need to be cut back and um, then basically covered over with cardboard etc to keep it all nice and neat and tidy well that's the plan anyway, we'll see ok so gooseberries blackcurrants that were supposed to be blackberries but are blackcurrants and red cabbage, or just general cabbage rather they're doing really well, they've come on nicely um, surviving very nice indeed square foot gardening bed uh, lots and lots of stuff coming on here the pak choy is looking lovely although some of it is starting to go to seed so I'm probably going to have to start harvesting this now and uh, see if it will freeze because we won't be able to eat all of that all at once everything else is coming up wonderfully and I have flowers on my asparagus peas lovely red flowers never seen that before because I've never grown them before right now hmm I thought those were dwarf French beans, they're obviously climbers. So these are going to come out and I'm going to put them in my bean bed because I've got uh, spaces on the canes for them to go up. And the uh, second little pack choy I've got at this end have definitely, definitely gone and bolted. So there's two there that I'm going to have to take out today. So I'll take those out. I'll try and water the others really well and shade them a little bit and see if they'll last another week or so. Comfrey, looking really nice. Um, a walking onion is now falling over so I've put a snake in there and tie that up a little bit because it's not quite ready I think it's just falling over because of the weight of the bull bills on the end which as you can see doing really well and I've got a courgette zucchini which I had a spare one so I stuck it in there that's a lettuce now this bed has gone a little bit different since last time I showed you I've taken out virtually all of the purple sprouting I've got one plant left at the back it's a huge plant probably about three foot tall when it stands straight and it's got a tiny, tiny purple sprouted head on it, which must be about two inches across. We'll have a look at it tomorrow, see if it's grown and if it's not, I'm going to take the, the, the head off, uh, take it home and freeze it and whip those out. I've got four cabbages in here, spring cabbage, um, often them compactor, which are doing quite well. And I've also got lots of weeds, so I've got to get in there and weed later on as well. All the stuff at the back, uh, if you remember from the last video, I had loads of unidentified brassicas in there. They've now all gone, decided I wasn't waiting and took them out. So in this bed I'm going to plant a tomatillo, um, which I believe grows about five foot high and covers an area about uh, three or four foot wide all the way around. So perfect space for it hopefully, we'll see how it grows. Onions, really well. Moving on. Onions, shallots, doing well, moving on. Leeks. There's the original leeks that I had planted before. The three from last year have come out now. They were getting to the stage where they needed to come out, so they're out and they're home and been eaten. And I've uh, puddled in another eight leeks um, using the technique where you put a hole in the ground, drop the leek in root first, don't fill the soil in, but fill it with water, and they're doing fine. Garlic. Getting rusty. Not rusty, sorry, it's getting brown. It's not rust, it's brown. Uh, it's doing perfectly naturally uh, what it's supposed to. 
Um, I had a lot of fertile around the roots of these before and it seems like there's just one big bulb rather than a split. Um, a bit strange seeing as how they've been through frost. A by heck have they been through frost this year. But I don't know what's going on with them. Anyway, cabbages, lettuce. A bit from this side this time. Uh, we've got uh, the front here, we've got some cauliflowers with some Lolo Rosso lettuce in there, which are doing quite well. Behind those Brussels sprouts. I'll move on to the bean bed as I'm here now. Peas. Now, peas aren't doing particularly well. They're, they're doing okay. They're about 12 inches tall, but they're starting to flower already. Talking to other people on the site here, we're all having the same problem. The peas are flowering at 12 inches tall. They're not climbing as we'd expect them to, or hope them to. Don't know whether it's because of a late start, or I don't know. Then we've got courgette. Now this one I thought was a zucchini, but looking at it compared to the others, I think it's a Nice de la Ronde. My uh, blue late runner beans, doing well. Not climbing as yet, and I'm still a cane missing. I must find a pole for that to put in. Sweet corn in the middle, doing very well. Um, one plant's a bit straggly, but the others are doing quite nice. Another zucchini at the far side. Now the runner beans. These are doing fine. There's now uh, another one, a late one, which has germinated. So I've got six coming up here, but I've still got two free canes. So what I'm going to do, the French beans I've just shown you in the square foot gardening bed, are going to come out, or most of them anyway, bring them down here and plant them up in here, and hopefully get some instant gratification on that. Now then. Well, hello again. It's now time for a quick run around the rest of the plots on Cartmore Crescent allotment. It's the first Sunday in July and it's uh, early afternoon and I'm going to have a quick whiz round and show you what other people are up to on the plot. Starting off down here, this is Tony's plot, he's got himself a new shed and he's got himself a water container at the back of it so you can just about see and uh, his polytunnel's pretty much empty now because everything's out. He's got lots of potatoes in here, to doing well and lots of hooped covers with other things in there, see so cabbages, lettuces and uh, lots of other things in there as well so uh, doing okay. Now moving on, this is Dawn's plot, there's a little big space in the middle which she's still got to finish off filling but there's lots and lots of rhubarb and uh, I think there's raspberries in there at the back. We've got sweet corn at the front, um, I'm not sure what else there is in there to be honest, there's some onions by the looks of it, lots of potatoes. Now we move on to Len's plot, now this is nice, neat, straight lines, onions, Lots. Now Len's been having problems with the foxes with his onions. For some reason they like his onions. They keep digging them up and he finds them all over the plot. Now I'm bringing them back and planting them and they dig them again. So he's put netting up and they've pulled the netting down and gone in and done it again. Looks like they've not been on last night but uh, well he's having problems with those. Lots of brassicas. Now he's taken the netting off these. I think he's being very brave because there's lots of cabbage whites around still. But looking good. Okay, got a frame here for his peas to climb up. Now Len's peas are doing better than, than mine. Uh, they're about 12 inches tall, they're not flowering. But we shall wait and see. Potatoes flowering, looking very similar to mine. And uh, David's streaming in the background. So I'll not go too close over that way, just in case uh, the noise gets too much for you. More onions celery by the looks of it, sweet corn and courgettes. Uh, go have a look at Michaela's plot. Okay, she's got some sweet corn in there and what looks like onions and lettuce, so a bit of a mixed bag in there. Loads of strawberries, some raspberry in there as well by the looks of it. A bed full of peas. Now her peas are fantastic, they must be what, two foot tall, loads of flowers on. Now that's what I wanted mine to look like and I've got nowhere near like that, so much better than my peas there. Lots of onions, some sweet corn, some berry bushes at the back, rhubarb, potatoes, herbs and some uh, cauliflowers, some cabbage which has been netted and uh, I think these are sweet peas looking at them and they're doing really well. Now she's taken on this last bit of uh, triangle of ground at the bottom which wasn't really doing anything down to where the, the pile of uh, stuff is at the bottom. Need the bindweed on the fence which is not a good idea to uh, get too close to that perhaps. 
but uh, she's taken this bit on and she's going to start using it um, digging beds etc seeing if she can get anything else of it as a tarot for this year see how it works anyway I think we'll move across to the other side of the uh, allotment rather than uh, going near the strimmer so we don't get the noise moving quickly along hopefully Okay, next plot along from mine, this is Terry's plot, he's uh, got a bit of a weed problem like we all have at the moment, as soon as you turn your back everything is growing, this is the base where he's going to be putting his uh, shed and polytunnel, I think he's going to have, the idea is he's going to have that just filled with concrete as a, as a base, got some fruit bushes and trees in pots, some potatoes, lots more potatoes, lots more potatoes and lots of broad beans at the back there bad looks of it. Let's try and uh, weed my way past the mower which I stupidly left on the path. And then we come on to David's plot, nicely in the shade. Now he's got some beans climbing up the poles there, some French beans in the middle by the looks of it. Peas, not much further on than mine. Uh, not sure, I think those might be Jerusalem artichokes, so they had some here last year so I'm presuming that's what's in. Which reminds me I've got some of mine to put in. Okay, potatoes, red cabbage, beetroot, leeks I think there must be. Lots of other stuff on the cover. Let's walk around the back. All this section down here is David's and he's got all his onions planted up there on the far side. Okay, I've got this plot over here. Now, this plot is Claire's, and uh, unfortunately, there's not a huge amount been done on that this this year. Um, she's not been very well, apparently, but uh, I think she really needs to do something fairly soon. Um, there's nothing really growing on here. Uh, it's been laid out with some nice raised beds, but uh, again, nothing happening so far. So I'll leave that one alone. This side is Steve's. He's got himself a new greenhouse, which he's in the process of putting together. Got a fair bit going on. Got some uh, onions in there, some rhubarb, brassicas. Uh, he did have leeks in here, but I can't see them. I think they may have, must have come out. And like, actually, no leeks are here at the end. Some cabbages and some sweet corn. And he's got a couple of cold frames, which is. Uh, I think he's actually got some chilies in those. His cabbages, cauliflowers in one of them, which have gone a bit too big, but he's not had time to bring them out. Now this plot is our newest plot holder, Simon's. And uh, considering he's only had this couple of months, he's doing fantastic. Now his peas are growing. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong with mine. <laughs> he's got himself some little raised beds, which I'm looking like he's made himself. Some beetroot and carrots in those, and the others are still being in the process of being made. And he's got some, uh, this is his daughter's, potatoes and lilies. And he's got a gnome hiding in the middle there. Okay, next plot. This is Sue and Simon's. Simon, Simon's? Stuart's. Sorry, Stuart. Uh, right, we've got some blackcurrants and some rhubarb on this end. And some potatoes. There's a flower bed there. Lots and lots of cabbages interplanted with lettuce bed ready for planting up and these are all collies with some broccoli in. Uh, some of the broccoli's unfortunately gone to seed but uh, oh, it's, uh, he knows about that. Okay this next half plot here is Pete's. Um, got some brassicas at the back, onions, raspberries at the front and some lovely flowers, sweet corn, uh, what looks like could be rhubarb there, but it's going to be yellow, I'm not sure what's wrong with that. And a big bed of potatoes at the back there, if you can see that. And move on to Ken's. Ken's also got a half a plot. He's got a three quarters of a bed of potatoes, onions, some radish. My God, look at the size of that radish. Bit of it slugged. 
but never seen a radish that size. Right, so he's got uh, some cabbages underneath his uh, frame, potatoes, more cabbages under a, a frame there, and he's got some fruit beds and his little greenhouse. Sweet corn, broad beans, and some peas and strawberries, in there, and there's enough tub. Right. Um, I'll do the other two or three plots when David's finished trimming so we can see what's going on over there because at the moment if I go there the noise will just be too much so we'll leave that for a few minutes half an hour or so and then I'll wander over and carry on filming then so see you then